Uh, okay, so this is going to be a breakdown of um, something I found very entertaining. Um, it's basically uh, when I first started studying uh, Turtle Guard, um, I believe by um, Eduardo, uh, was the first guy I saw really uh, utilize a Turtle Guard, um, if it's, you know, I guess it's considered a guard. But, <laughs> um, but it's really interesting, um, probably 10 years ago or so is when I kind of checked it out. Uh, more recently, you're going to see... Um, uh, you know, more of a breakdown just because of the evolution of it all to, um, uh, you know, uh, Brett Minkelson has a, has a really good um, breakdown into the different positions that actually make it, make the, uh, this actual system work. Um, I do consider it a system <laughs> at this point, um, just from, you know, watching um, uh, different videos on it, uh, watching these uh, different tournaments and also practicing it myself, teaching, uh, uh, teaching it. Um, it's 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 very effective. Um, we're not going to see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of offense. A lot of this is going to be essentially just kind of uh, uh, waiting for opportunities um, and just more 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 or less playing more defensive jujitsu. Uh, but it is really interesting to watch. Um, so uh, I'll kind of go through the positions as they're happening. There's going to be a very common theme here. Um, I believe there's it's going to be more leg locks, um, but you know you can do wrist control. Uh, there's certainly other things you can go to, but um, in this, I think this particular tournament, uh, there were seven matches and all seven were won, uh, kind of using this, uh, system. So, um, but yeah, I'll probably only get to two matches. Um, but, um, they're really interesting to watch, uh, all, all of them. So, um, the positions that you're going to be kind of seeing, uh, a lot being played is, uh, Panda, Turtle, Running Man, Hawking, and, um, and some inversion, uh, going into leg attacks. So, uh, so let's start, uh, let's start checking it out here and see what, see what happens. Okay, right here. So it's kind of like a little, kind of went for a little wrist control, kind of just went to straight to turtle. Um, so first things first, you're going to see this is a little perplexing for the guy on top right here, just because, um, you know, the guy on bottom playing turtle, it's, it's, it's very different from the turtle you typically would see a jiu-jitsu guy play and that's the, and what's really different is the elbows are typically on the inside uh what happens is when the if he were to actually place his elbows on the inside and keep the position that he's in the person on top can pretty easily um establish inside position or hooks uh inside position is just basically between the armpit and the hip if they can if the guy on top can occupy the inside position uh with either one of his arms or his legs um then he's effectively uh, could start establishing some uh, control, uh, which could lead into his attacks. So, if that position is denied, um, specifically in this in this particular case in turtle, uh, then it, it's much harder to you know uh, gain control of the position. So you're going to see a little little bit of confusion here. And the guy about is playing being very patient here. Uh, one other thing you'll notice is his you know the other thing we're taught in. Uh, in jiu-jitsu is, you know, we've got to keep our hands, you know, around our neck, you know, to make sure that we can stop a choke. If you were to actually do that right here, then what's going to happen is, um, you know, it brings his elbows away from his, from his hips um, and his forearms away from his hips. And um, then obviously the person on top can, can start to gain control um, and then start working into attacks. Uh, so um, just understand that and we'll, we'll see, see some of this go down, but if the person, if the guy on top were actually just trying to go around his neck right now, I mean, there's no control established with the person on top. Um, so he could just simply just shuck him off, fall to side to running man, to hawking, all these different positions. You can completely uh, mitigate uh, any type of um, attack he can start to develop. So it wouldn't be so smart to actually use your hands right now with the guy on top to just kind of go around the neck um, because he, you know, he'd be over committing to top and, uh, would, would kind of lose control. So, so now he's kind of looking around to see if he can get to, to the inside there. Again, if he puts his arm around, so right here. So this is really interesting. When you, as soon as the overhook go, happens here, the, person, the guy on top, his right hand is going over top of the shoulder. And this is fine. Effectively, he's given his hand to the, to the guy on bottom. So the guy on bottom who's playing turtle, um, he can essentially just grabbing his, his hand or the guy's wrist. I can't really tell right now, but typically the four fingers or the, or, or the wrist. 
if um, if he gets control of that, um, and the guy on the other, uh, the guy's other arm on top, his left hand, if he can't get that through through to the other side and establish some sort of seat belt, um, then this is uh, going to be an advantageous position for the person on bottom. So he ripped his hand out. He's still kind of fishing in there. So guy on bottom is being very patient. So right here, <clears throat> this is typically what's ha what happens is there's a little bit of frustration, um, lost connection to the back. This is not necessarily a good thing to do. Uh, as soon as the, as soon as there's no attachment to the back, um, obviously the person on bottom can feel that, the person playing turtle. Uh, he could simply invert and start attacking the leg, uh, establishing some sort of guard. Uh, he can do all kinds of different things, uh, upper body attacks. So um, as soon as there's a disconnect, um, the person on bottom could choose to go inverted here, but we'll see what happens. Right here. So as you can see, because there's no connection to his back and there's nothing really holding him there, uh, he can simply invert and start to counterattack. And this is why this position is, is very effective. Boom. So the, uh, the counterattack failed here, uh, and that's okay because he swung right back around to his guard. Um, because I believe he's specifically playing this game, he, he opted not to, to, to go to any kind of guard. Um, and I believe this is kind of a test for this actual system. Um, he's actually going to probably go back to turtle here. But notice his right, uh, as soon as he tries to go back to turtle or turn his, his, turn his, turn his body, notice his uh, right hand placement. See his right hand? It's, his forearm is on his hip. So he's denying that inside position again. Right back to turtle. Both elbows now on the outside, forearms on the um, on the hip. Now the guy on top is trying to try to hug around the body. This is not going to be very effective, just simply because um, he has not established inside position. So if you can't get inside position and just kind of hug around the body, then you can't really generate any kind of uh, meaningful attack here. Um, so you know this isn't. Um, it's not going to do much. So now, here we go. So now he's going over top with the right arm. Still, there is no inside position established. Uh, the guy playing turtle, does, his left arm is on the inside. And now that he's thrown the right arm over, the guy on top is his right arm over, over um, he's fed his arm again to, uh, to the guy in turtle. He uh, can now grab his hand. He rips his hands out. Still trying to get some sort of inside. He keeps looking. <laughs> I think he's, I'm not sure why he's looking, but <laughs> I think he's probably just looking for a gap somewhere. Now, again, if you notice during this whole time this is happening, at any time, the guy on bottom, he's being very patient here, uh, which is smart because um, the idea also is that you're spending much less energy, right? Uh, it's kind of a safe zone right now that he's in. Um, there's no, obviously, does, you know, there's no reason for him to really move as much as he needs to be until this guy on top can kind of figure out um, the puzzle here. Uh, but, uh, you know, if, if the guy on top gets lazy uh, at any point in time, this could turn into something, uh, to a counterattack. Okay, so now he's trying to drag him to his, uh, drag, him, drag him to his side. And now we're going to go into a panda position. Boom. So he went to a panda position and transferred to the other side into a running man, and then to turtle. So that was a really good little transition. Um, these are combinations now. So we're throwing combinations um, um, in, as soon as when somebody pull, when he started to, his, the guy on top started to pull him down, um, he just opted to go to panda. The guy adjusted to, adjust, to kind of attack to panda. Um, then the, uh, went, the guy on bottom went to running man, and then to back to turtle. So. Okay, so you see right here. So this is the, uh, the arm reaching behind and grabbing the leg. Um, now he's doing this because he's going to invert and I start attacking the leg right here. Uh, one thing to notice, uh, if you, uh, his leg was to the, uh, the guy on top, his leg was between the guy's legs that was in turtle, okay? Um, this makes the inversion pretty easy. He could, he could have inverted it to the left or to the right, depending on which arm he was grabbing with. Whichever arm he's grabbing with, that's typically the way the shoulder he's going to roll on. So in this case, he was grabbing with his left arm, so he inverted to the left. And because his leg is center, now he's kind of entering into what some would consider kind of a tornado guard, but it, it's, 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 it's entering into a leg lock. So here's what would be considered somewhat of a tornado guard. 
Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's it's just what it looks like. <laughs> so uh, different entries and stuff for for this type of uh, for that type of guard. But this is kind of where where uh, why it was coined that. Uh, effectively, uh, let's say the guy was much bigger than him that was on top. Um, he could he could pendulum him that that right leg that's sticking up down and really pendulum it down and swing the guy on top over. So he would effectively get a sweep. Um, now with the mo more modern, you know, leg lock attacks and things like this, this is uh, an excellent leg lock entry. So this will be a honey hole uh, entry right off the bat as, if, as soon as you got the guy to flop over. The guy's not going to flop over. He's in his post back. Um, what's really bad here is now that the guy on top is now his butt's about to hit the ground. This is no good. His legs are also getting isolated and getting put in front of him. Um, so this is no good because um, we're effectively uh, now in um, establishing kind of a um, uh, belly down kind of heel hook position that could expose itself. Um, the guy that inverted was doing is doing a very good job of holding um, both legs, um, really holding control. So he effect effectively got him to his back. Now he's in big trouble. Uh, this is no good. Now the guy that's seated, uh, you know, his, his hand fighting is not going to last very long here. Uh, the guy's butt's in his face. And, you know, trying to reach for your legs to try to protect him here is going to be, um, uh, it's just a matter of time. Holding both legs now. Okay, so now we're switching over to a honey hole position to a belly down heel hook. Um, and this should be uh, finished pretty soon. So now he's entering into a hand fight. The guy on top, or the guy, um, you know, uh, seated here, he could, you know, what he needs to try to do is try to hide his heel, obviously, um, turn his heel to the to the rib. Uh, as soon as the person, as soon as uh, as soon as the heel hook starts to, he starts to the guy on top attacking the leg tries to adjust and goes, you know, in uh, knees down to try to dig the heel. Then he can turn the other way and try to escape. But effectively, he needs to be hiding his heel right now. Uh, hand fighting will buy him a little bit of time, um, but this is this is really bad. And now it's isolated. So, um, just as so, man, a really good example of, I mean, just being patient. Pretty much, it's almost zero energy spent <laughs> with the guy on bottom. Um, there was some frustration <laughs> with the guy, guy on top. Kind of funny trying to figure it out. Uh, but you you can see as soon as there's a disconnect or you know as soon as there's a there's an attachment to a leg, there can be an inversion uh, right to a leg lock. So this is going to be another match here. Um, this guy uh, I did watch this already. So this guy he does uh, better. Um, he's you know there's a lot more transitions now that we're going to see. And um, but the guy that's going to be on top does a, does does a, a better job I think of uh, controlling um, trying to get inside. So it'll be interesting to watch the guy that's going to pull turtle. He's uh, he's going to have a little more uh, work to do here. Um, so just kind of this little 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 fake shot here just to get the turtle. Guy on top, super excited. He's like, "All right, I got you now." So <laughs> so right here, his left hand's trying to dig, but precisely because the elbow's on the out doesn't mean he can't get it. But again, be it's going to be very more uh, be very difficult to uh, for him to get his left hand. Uh, and drive it in there. Um, again, if the guy on bottom, if his elbow, if his le if that elbow that we're looking at, the left elbow was on the inside, there'd be a big gap right there, and and the guy on top could easily slide that that hook in. So, um, so he can't. He he notices he can't get it here. So he's gonna try to pull him, which which is smart. You know, trying to get an underhook on the leg there, trying to get to the shoulder and just pull him to his side. Just staying tight and turtle, being patient. Now he's just, okay, so you see the disconnect here? Uh, you know, you got to be very careful because inverting here, uh, again, leg attacks um, and even upper body attacks if the person is not careful, uh, going into triangles and things like that. So um, by him trying to flatten his, his fingers, <laughs> trying to flatten his hands and, and, and slide the, the arms in, now this normally would work if, if the elbows were on the inside, but um, it's not so effective here. So he notices that, and so he's like, I'm going to pull this guy down. He's going to go, yep, yeah, boom. So he gets pulled really hard here. So now the guy is almost, almost compromised to the side, but he was able to hold his base. Get back to Turtle. Because the guy's going across the face, but now he's getting his hand exposed. Okay, now he pulls his hand out. Okay, so he pulls him really hard again here to get him to his side. Okay, so he almost got him to his side, but now he's, he's opting for Panda. 
panda, boom. So right here, this is really interesting. So this is what most people uh, think is going to happen. You know, like, well, I just exposed my back, and I'm going to get my back taken. Well, no, because the inside position, there is no seatbelt. There is no connection. So let's take a look at this. His, um, his, the, the guy on top, his, his right hand is being controlled, like the four knuckles. Uh, it might be a thumb in there. I'm not sure. But either way, his, hand, his actual hand is being controlled, not the wrist. So he's not going to be able to establish any kind of connection, even if he was able to somehow get that get that other, his left hand through to, uh, as an underhook. Um, throwing his top hook in here is gonna, not going to do him much good either because, again, the, the guy that's uh, seated here, his right hand is still on the inside. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is a problem. You know, he can't, he can't just throw a hook in here. Uh, plus, there's, there's, there's ways to get out of this, right? He can just fall to his side and go to running man or go to hawking, and he can go to all these uh, and then go back to turtle. I mean, there's ways to, to kind of stop this. He could double unders with both his arms on that one leg and pop them out, right, and go into more of a wrestling technique. So, boom. So because he still has control of the hand, uh, the gown top, his left hand is still not connected. His left foot is not hooked in. His right foot is uh, over top and hooking, which is good. So right here. So at this point, you know, the guy on bottom could probably establish a guard here. Um, you can start with a baby chair or, whatever, or a little chair uh, if you wanted to. But there's, there's a guard. You, got, you know, he has hooks here. Um, but again, this is, a, uh, you know, a, 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 a guy specifically training to... Um, to, to play this kind of system to see how it works. So he's probably going to, we'll see where he goes with this, but it's going to go back to turtle. So right back to turtle. You can see how the hook was just defeated by just simple, you know, body movement. His, his arms did not move away from his hips. And that was the whole point. Um, when I show people this kind of stuff, I always say like, you know, when we practice this, I always tell people, hey, you know, like what we're going to do is we're going to, we're, we're not going to let our hands go away from our hips. And, you know, don't, don't worry about your neck. If somebody grabs your neck, you're going to start moving your body in directions to where you can free your neck, not using your hands to grab and pull away. You, as soon as you use your hands to grab and pull away, then you are opening up the inside position and people can start getting underhooks. So in that whole transition, um, his, el his elbows did not leave his hips. And um, he also gained control of the one hand. So there's a bit of a guard here if he wanted it. He's going back to turtle. So the guy lost his that top hook. Okay. So it looks like he has his left hand in here, though. So his left hand is he's getting to the side. His left hand's in. So now we're going into more of a running man escape. The reason why you know it's a difference between a, the running man or, or uh, and the hawking position, they're very. It's, if you're not, if you don't know what you're looking at, they can look very similar. But because the the guy on bottom, his right leg is uh, over top of his left leg. It looks more like a running position. This is why it's more of a running man position. If his left leg was sticking straight out and his right leg was behind, posting on the ground, um, then uh, that would be more of a hawking position. Now, his upper body matters here, but we can't see his upper body. So um, so the guy on, on top, he he's kind of has a shallow, shallow left. His hand is still kind of wedged in there, right? Um, I suspect it's being held uh, by the guy on bottom. He's probably still holding his hand. Now he pulls his hand out, so now he's lost that, the inside position. Now he's going, trying to go back over the neck. We're, he's, he's getting comfortable here in this running position, but he's probably going to go back to turtle, cause, or no, he's going to go back to panda. So he went back to seated. Now a lot of people think that there's a lot of pressure here on the back, okay, when somebody's on top of you, smashing you down. And that is certainly the case uh, if the guy on bottom, if his elbows were on the inside, uh, then, man, you better be flexible because the guy on top is going to effectively smash your face into the ground, kind of bend you in half. Um, but uh, if you put your elbows to the hips, your forearms on the hips, um, this creates kind of a wedge between your own body. So your, your, your arms are more supporting the weight um, rather than you know, your back being smashed all the way down and your back trying to pull back up, which would not work. So because you wedge your arms in there um, into your hips, um, you're effectively distributing the, the weight to your arms. So um, that's why this is effective. I, I, I suspect he's pretty flexible as well, um, but I'm not flexible at all, and I, I do this, and so it still works. So we're going back to turtle. Swing to the other side. So the guy, again, he's going into more of a hugging position because there is no inside position yet. Um, the guy on bottom still has, a, has the inside position. The guy on top is now going into a hugging. 
going around the arm. So he's getting to the side. He's probably trying to pull him or go to a headlock of some sort. He's going to pull him. Going back to a bit of a panda position here. Boom. This, so this is panda where he's like sitting up with his back fully exposed. Again, the issue is, is that there is no inside position. The guy on top has to establish hooks with his legs and has to establish inside uh, an underhook uh, with that left arm going into the guy's armpit to connect his hands at least to get some sort of control to start attacking the back. If he can't establish that, then we can never actually... The guy doing turtle, or the guy being doing panda here, he really doesn't even have to try to escape yet because there is no control. Doing the, now, so the guy on top was kind of doing going across, across his face, um, trying to pull him down, so he opted to go back to a running man position. So now we're back in a running man position. Um, and again, notice the, uh, the guy on bottom, his right arm, it still has not left his hip. It's on the inside. You can't see his arm. The guy on top needs to get that right arm threaded through so you would you would be able to see the guy on bottom's arm. Uh, but he can't. Can't get it there yet. Stay nice and flat to the floor. And notice his head, too. His head placement, he's not arching away. You know, if the guy on bottom, if his head was, like, arching away, then, yeah, he can get a pr probably a pretty good uh, lock on the neck there. But his head is always, like, going towards his knees, right? He's always, so he's kind of crunched in, this crunched in position. So it kind of takes his head kind of away from... From, from the person on top, so it makes it a little harder to gather the head, okay, and, and to start to form actual attacks. This changes the angle. Uh, it makes it very awkward. So now it looks like he's probably going to turtle or panda. Going back to panda. So this is a very, uh, this is a seated panda. Uh, see, I couldn't do this. This is very flexible. So, uh, for me at least, uh, I couldn't do this, but very effective. Again, this whole time, just fighting for an inside position. Guy on top is, is doing a good job here, though. You know, there has uh, there's been no counterattacks yet from the guy on bottom. He's just simply just. I always say it's like you get mauled for a little while when you're actually practicing this stuff. It's like you're getting mauled to death, and um, and then you start adding attacks to it, and it starts to get a little better. Back to a seated position. Now, some people might ask, well, why didn't the guy on bottom just grab that leg? Uh, most some beginners would say this. I would say, um, uh, you know, a couple seconds back there, why didn't he take his right arm and scoop around the guy's leg right there, the guy's right leg? Yeah, it's something you do not want to do technically, um, unless you have a plan um, to scoop that leg up because you start entering into crucifix positions, and now effectively his right arm will be controlled by the guy on top's legs. Um, so this would be more of a crucifix position, and even though he wouldn't have a uh, inside position yet established on the uh, other side uh, of of the body, um, the the guy's right arm uh, would be trapped by the guy's legs um, on top, and then that that would impede his movement. Um, so he wouldn't be able to transition as easily through all these positions. Not the end of the world. I'm sure you can find, kind of find your way out, uh, but that's why you typically won't reach for that far leg in that particular position. But now he's going for panda. Goes back to running man escape. Still fighting for the inside. That's all we're doing here. He's trying to thread his hand in. Looks like he's got it. All. It looks like he might have got the inside. Nope. He's back out again. He's trying to get him flat. So now we're into a hawking position. So this is the hawking position. Um, I play this often. It's it's pretty. It's a very strong position. You're guy's left leg is sticking straight out, his right leg, his knees up, and his foot's posting on the ground. Can't see it, but that's, that's most likely what's happening. His head is crunching, crunching in towards his knees, and his back is not flat. It's off the mat. It's kind of at an angle. Um, the major thing that makes this work, and everybody thinks that, you know, well, he can grab the arm and Kimura, the guy on top can grab the arm, he can Kimura you, he can get the arm bar, he can step that leg over, and get all these great positions. Uh, not the case because the guy on top or the guy on bottom, I'm sorry, the guy on bottom, his right arm, if he just kind of shrugs his shoulder back and keeps that el his right elbow more closer to the ground, um, then those positions don't really work. Um, also attacking the back is not really going to work because all the downward pressure going to the right in this particular, uh, situation, um, would make it much harder to attack those, those three, uh, positions. Now I'm not saying it's impossible. It's it's, it's not, it's impossible, but um, it'd be definitely uh, harder to do for the guy on top. Rather than if he would just turn here, then he would, uh, with that elbow, you know, on the inside, then he would have a, a problem with those positions or those attacks. Okay, so he's got a grip around the neck. He's going for like a cradle position here. 
So now the guy on the bottom, he's pushing the, the head. Uh, you know, he's, he's trying to press the head away. Um, this is a good uh, tactic here because, you know, I always say it's it's always surprises me that there's not more head control. And um, it's obviously that, you know, that people know about it, but people don't really utilize as much as they should, you know, where the body goes where the head goes. And so when you start pushing the head away, he can effectively gain some space here, uh, framing out. You know, there's nothing, you know, both the guy's hands are occupied right now, try, trying to get into more of a cradle position. But pressing his head away will actually effectively give some space so that he can get his right arm back to the inside and go back to a running man escape. So now his arm is back to the inside. So he gained the position back. Simply framing on the head, getting his right shoulder and his right arm back to the inside. So now he's going more to a running man. So now that's a running man. So his top leg is over, his bottom leg is behind. Because he, because the guy on top lost the shoulder, he can't keep him flat anymore. He's going to be trying to go to turtle here. Could go to an inver uh, possible inversion right there. Not probably not the best time to do it. Um, so the guy on top's getting trying to control. So now here we go. So back to turtle. He's in a pretty good position here. So you see how his hand like kind of flipped back behind him like that. The guy on bottom is left hand. He was searching for a leg to get an attachment on. The guy on top noticed this and kind of swung to the other side. This doesn't necessarily help help him as much because he can still he can still invert to the other side like that. Um, the reason why this is that that it, the guy on bottom felt that that was the time because the guy on top was kind of sinking back. Right, there was no, he wasn't top heavy, like his chest was not connected top uh, of, the, of, of the back. Um, so as soon as his weight kind of sunk back, I mean, he has no control of the upper body. Um, so, you know, now we can, it's a little easier to invert now because we're not bearing any weight. So now he's upside down. Um, I'm not sure that this is going to get finished, but certainly now we've, we have a counterattack. Okay, so now he's switching over to honey hole to one side. Now he's switching back to get to a backside 50-50. Uh, um, he swings through. So now um, there is no 50-50 established yet, but they're kind of, it's a shallow. They both lost the knee lines here. Um, but, you know, if the, right, if the guy on bottom, if his right leg were to slide through and the guy on top, his right leg would slide through, they'd be effectively be in 50-50. But there's a big old gap right there right now. So, um, so that's, you know, most likely not going to happen. And the guy on top is doing a good job of controlling the top leg is what you, you should be doing to a certain degree. Um, you don't want that leg to get reaped over top of, 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 uh, of his right leg. So, um, and the, the, the one thing, the good thing that has, uh, that the guy on bottom has right now is he has, you know, the heel there. You can see the, the heel is, ex uh, is exposed. So he could start to generate an attack. But if you can't effectively get a, a good reap going on here and the guy beats the knee line, uh, he should be okay. So there's the knee line. Is is the knee line's beat? So the guy's knees out. So this is what we call like a short heel. You can finish people with a short heel hook uh, if you're if you're experienced with that. Um, the guy's really good though. It's, it's they're really hard to finish without the, without the knee line. It's it's difficult. So now that he saw the the knee line is gone, um, he's going to switch over to the the other leg. It looks like, but the guy on top's doing a good job uh, with his left arm of underhooking uh, the top leg. And so, you know, he can't effectively swing that leg all the way over yet. So now notices this, the guy on bottom notices this, that he can't get that leg back yet. So he's going to turn to the other direction. He knows that he's the pass is starting. I look already, he's going to go right to turtle to running man. Well, let's see. Well, he might, let's see what he does. Uh, look at the left arm there. Let's just watch the guy on bottom, his left arm. Let's see where we go. Bang. Do you see how his left arm went right to the, to the inside? So we're fine here. Uh, right back to where, where he was. Bang. Going to turtle. He inverts right off the bat. Right, again, boom, right here. Now, that time the guy was doing a good job. Is he had good connection to the back, but in that transition, um, the guy on bottom felt that it was good to do a transition right here to attack the legs again. And now he and he was correct because now you can see his butt is now seated on the ground. Now that the butt's seated on the ground and the guy is now on top uh, with an inverted, uh, on top of the legs, inverted, uh, the guy on bottom now, which is the guy seated, is going to have a difficult time here. He rolls through, gets a reap. So now there's some knee line. The guy on the top with his right leg uh, is starting to get that lead, that his, his right leg starting to get reaped over. The guy, uh, the guy on bottom now, the guy getting his leg attacked, his left leg is now all the way through. Um, and so now what he's doing actually 
is his left arm is pushing on that knee, trying to frame weights so that he can free his knee line. If he can free his knee line effectively, then he can, uh, you know, he can start to turn and, and get out. But now it's a problem. So now that he's going more, his back's flat to the mat, this is no good. Um, there's a reap, a full reap of the leg. Now he's going to have to opt for, you know, getting hiding his heel um, to start turning to get away from this position. If he doesn't act soon, he's going to have to go to hand fighting, and then inevitably he will get tapped if he doesn't hand fight. That, and that looks like he's kind of given up here. He's hiding his heel a little bit. The guy on top is digging the second leg, which is absolutely what you should do. Um, you should always try to gather the second leg uh, when, you're, when you're in these honey hole positions, or really any kind of leg lock and sing where there's, you know, reaping or, or honestly any, any leg lock position. If you can get the second leg, the leg that's not being reaped um, or the, the leg that's not being, you know, quote unquote attacked, then um, effectively the guy's legs are pinned together, um, which gives you more time and more control. So um, both legs can be attacked. Uh, the main leg is obviously the, the is the, the, the takes priority, uh, but the second leg can uh, can also be attacked. Um, but it mostly is there to just impede movement um, and to get a good attachment and for the person not to be able to move, so you can actually take your time. Now the second leg has got uh, he's got control of. He's going inverted again. Isol get more isolation, and this is going to be bad here. Boom. So as soon as he came back to rotate back, he'd already had the heel, um, heel hook established. And that'll be a tap. Nice. So not a ton of, ton of that, that, that'll be it uh, for, for the breakdown for the, vi for the two, uh, two videos. Um, but there's, you know, there's five more, uh, there's five more matches, um, very similar to these two. Um, but the transitions are a little different, but same, same trend, same uh, movements being used. Um, but what a what a funny and you know fantastic display of um this like defensive jiu jitsu um uh, or turtle guard as some people call it as well um to uh, uh display in a, and especially in a tournament uh set where you know things are actually going you know a little harder than the normal than practice so um uh, good uh good breakdown of um of the actual you know the panda the running man you know hawking inverting to to leg locks um, you know, the, and, and especially the turtle position of how to, how to control it when somebody's really trying to attack. So, um, yeah, this is a good one. And I'll probably break down the, uh, the other ones, uh, at a later date. All right, that's it.